Welcome to episode 275 of the All the Book Show, the official podcast of the David A. Howe Public Library. We talk book news, author news, and literary news. I'm Eric Mickles. I'm Nick Gunning. How you doing today? Like in general? Yeah. Fine. I took care of some people's cats. Sure. I'm Got real a cold. Tip. A ten dollar tip? That's that's yeah. pretty good. That's, that's like that's like bellboy at a fancy hotel kind of tipping. That's pretty good. I'd hope I'd get a little bit more as a bellboy at a fancy hotel. I mean, how many bodies are you not seeing? You know what? Not for nothing. I think you look great in one of those outfits with a little, like, pillbox hat. I think you would. I think you could pull it not off. Not for nothing. I've uh, I've never needed to hear you tell me I would look good as a bellhop. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's on record. So there's no... <laughs> you can't take it back. Have so you been cold? You're wearing your uh, you're wearing your Rudolph uh, yeah yeah bumble. I've, I've got some sweater. Christmas I've got some Christmas gear on. Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of Christmas, have you gotten into the Christmas spirit at all? You got your tree up? Anything like that? I did put the tree up. It's not decorated. Okay. And I put my beagle in a Christmas sweater. Okay. Well, that's yeah. That's so. two steps. My son yeah. was chomping at the bit. I mean, as soon as we got close to Thanksgiving, he was like, "Let's put the tree up." Mm -hmm. So we did. We yep. put it up. We put it up, I guess, the day after Thanksgiving. We put a few Christmassy things up Thanksgiving night because he just couldn't handle it. But yeah, we got yeah. the tree Kendra up. I wasn't here, so I put it up the day after. So when she came home, it was up. Uh, I see. We have so many ornaments. I'd actually be keen on not putting on the ornaments this year, oh. but that was qu quickly vetoed. Well, we did put fewer. We didn't put any of the glass bulb ornaments we have because we used to have mm -hmm. like a side room that we put the tree in, but we knocked a wall out, and so now it's just a free for all for our cats. Yeah. So yeah, not, not much breakable on, on that tree. Yeah. I just wanted the, the white tree with the lights. I get that. But, um, Kendra voted no or or voted okay. yes on ornaments, and then she flipped Georgia. So you know. What wow. Can I do? <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, she, she's owed. We watched uh, Garfield's Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> uh -huh. as well as a couple of Teen Titans Go Thanksgiving episodes. Sure, okay. So, some good times. We had an outdoor, uh, my brother came over and we ate outdoors and it started raining. And so I put a tarp up between the garage and the back of our house. It worked uh -huh. weirdly well. So that's, so, uh, that's I'm in, the I'm in a Billy elegy. I was just going to say, I'm going to put that on Redneck Pinterest if I can just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Glenn Quite. Close came by in full makeup. Yeah, she did. Speaking of Hillbilly Elegy, nobody likes that movie. Up it, right? No, it has some of the worst reviews. It I've really seen this does. Year. Yeah. And I mean, the book was, the book was hot stuff. I mean, that was a yeah. bestseller forever. One of the reviews I read said it's basically like a rich person's view of poor people. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, well, they must wear overalls all the time. Can you imagine, Harold? You know, in the nineties, I wore I wore overalls all the time. So, did you? I did. Yeah. yeah. Oshkosh bagosh. Yeah, and one one of the straps was always open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you had one of those uh, butt flaps on the overall. That no, was not that. That's hillbilly elegy. No, no, no. That's the rich man's hillbilly <laughs> elegy opinion. No, this was this was denim and khaki overalls. <laughs> That I only would snap one side of, and the others yeah. would just hang. So yeah, you had your slingshot in your pocket, and you were <laughs> yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Walter Matthew was yelling at you from afar. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'd catch frogs and put them in my overall pockets. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would do that. I would do that. Yeah. All right. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? Is that Dennis the Menace or is that Little Rascals? That was Little Rascals. Okay, I, was I going, thought so. I was going. Be, there was a whole bunch of uh, latchkey yeah. kids. I was going <laughs> yeah. back and forth between. Yeah. There. Boy, so, you want to ruin a day? Google what happened to the little rascals. Like all of them? Pretty much. Like yeah. the original. Yeah, the originals. On yeah, TV. yeah don't, they have don't, very depressing. Don't look at that. The rascals and Danny Bonaducci. Just leave it in the past. Uh, and on that note, uh, who's Danny Bonad? What from the Partridge Family? What happened to him? He had a you sad life. He had a sad life. There was a TV movie about it. All right, but let's get into our bookmark. <laughs> Now the last time we bookmarked, uh, my son was here, and so you, <laughs> so you had to seriously edit what you wanted to talk about. But I was I, reading, uh, yeah, I had finished Anthony Kiedis' yeah. issue. The and fact I was like, he sure had a crazy life. The fact that you were able to put two sentences together about the life of Anthony Kiedis in front of a six-year-old was actually very impressive to me. So let me have it. Let me have uh, it. How no, much coke just, did he do off a of toilet of, seats? Uh, no, I, you know, I don't, there's probably cocaine in there, but I'm heroin, sure. I think, yeah. is his, uh, was oh, his, his drug uh, choice. Drug okay. choice. Uh, no, this he is, just had. If you're not he, familiar, Anthony Kiedis is the lead singer of uh, Red, Red Hot, Hot Chili, Chili Peppers. Peppers. Yes, that is the reason I read it. It's, it's the only reason I kept reading it. 
Yeah. Uh, but also, it was probably the reason I wanted to put it down because I was like, I like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I yeah. like their music. I like yeah. the lyrics. And he just writes all the lyrics. So yeah. reading about his life, I'm like, oh, this is gross. Just yeah. things in there that you don't want to know. You got to be real careful when you start researching people you admire. You got to be yeah. real careful. So he just is not a person I admire. I right. Just, he's, he, he hasn't been a person I admire, like, as soon as I even knew about his life, but he, <laughs> he's still a person who writes lyrics I connect with. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, definitely if, if you haven't read this and you're a fan of the Chili Peppers, you know, this isn't like Bruce Springsteen where you read it like, wow, yeah, now I get it. Now I get it. Yeah. This is one of those things you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> they get to Californication and that's like the end of the book. Mm -hmm. And then like, I, I didn't even connect it because this came out in 2003, but they'd be like working on and writing and just putting out the By The Way album, which is the album I keep waiting for him to talk about. And so he does it. The only story shared in there is about how Venice Queen is about uh, the woman who helped him, one of the women who helped him on his recovery. And like, I, I had already known that story. So huh. it was a bummer. And then it's one of those things I'm like, well, now tell me about Stadium Arcane. But he can't. It doesn't happen. Uh, you know, I was. I, this is. I was. Some, this is a long book. I would not want an extended and <laughs> yeah. updated version. That of was this enough book. of it. Okay. I was thinking about that because you mentioned his friendship with River Phoenix and all of their connections. And that I just. Was interesting. Yes. I just recently watched Stand by Me for the first time. Oh, okay. So, River Phoenix, of uh, course. Yeah, no, that stuff was interesting. Like, I didn't realize, like, how much he interacted with Kurt Cobain or yeah. how River Phoenix was there when they were filming um, the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the and, other thing you couldn't say when my son was here. You were like, their fourth album or whatever yeah, it is. Fourth album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, just just those, the, the housing and uh, a little bit into John Frusciante's breakup. It's funny because Flea is there from, like, almost beginning to end, but he's also always just kind of, like, an auxiliary character. Mm. It's like every now and then Keaton is like, yeah, and then I woke up in a ditch. And then Flea was <laughs> off and he was breaking up with his wife, I guess. All right, back to, back to the end. <laughs> like, John gets more. Even Chad seems to get more. And it's so I... funny. Chad is just this, uh, he's just this, like, I don't know, almost like a spirit animal sometimes. <laughs> like, if the Nikitas is like, I was in a hotel room, and Chad Smith just came in roaring, what are you doing in my hotel room? Wow. And then he was gone. I bought you the flea book for Christmas last I year. I know. So I'm going to be now you gotta book. Now you got to get to it, yeah. Yeah, that one, like, you, you go on a scar tissue, and you look at Goodreads, and people are like, I could not finish this book, this, this self-righteous. Uh, uh, but, like, nothing but good reviews uh, for Flea. For Flea, oh, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. So I've been using Overdrive a lot to read stuff yeah. digitally. Uh, we did a whole video about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> that was a very awkward <laughs> time for me. <laughs> You're like, no, just freeform. It's just yeah. freeform your installation of Overdrive. I'm like, okay, as typing in how to use Overdrive. <laughs> it's not a short video either. You can find that on our Facebook page, David A. Howe Public Library. Uh, it has over a thousand views at this point. So well, you know, it's doing well. Yeah. It's I read uh, The yes. Consuming Fire by John Scalzi. Oh, whom you have a love-hate relationship with, I feel like. I wouldn't say I have a love-hate relationship. I'd say I have a. I liked one of his books, and <laughs> now I read his other books sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay. You know what it is? I hate his dialogue oh, the most. Okay. It's his dialogue is just so painfully manufactured to sound quippy and stuff. And it's one of those things, too. It's, sometimes you'll write, like, somebody will say, I envied you. No, you didn't. You're right. I didn't. Hmm. I know. Hmm. And I'm just, and like, that's a bad, I guess that sounds, when I say it out loud, that's a bad example. But when it's just nonstop. Anyway. Yeah, I was definitely not quippy of what you just did. Is book two of the interdependency. I read the first one. This is the one where everybody's connected through some kind of like space time Ooh. connection. It, they, you know, not a, uh, not faster than light, but right. there's a flow in the universe you can travel through. And, uh, this is the sequel as that flow is like collapsing and people are worried there's this, but I just, I don't know. Nothing really happens. I just wanted kind of like a McDonald's space opera, which is, I guess what I'm getting. <laughs> but the third book, if I pick it up, it will probably be the last one. I, the last Scalzi book I read. Okay. So then you're out Then you're done. Uh, Similarly, I just gave up on the CW series, Supergirl. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? It's so bad. Uh, Finally, just couldn't take it. Couldn't take it anymore. She's super. She's my f Supergirl. You know, one of my all-time favorite characters. But I just yeah, can't. Love her. I just can't with that show. Yeah. Ugh. You just can't even with I, that show. I can't even, Eric. Actually, yeah. thank you. Doesn't give you any of the feels. 
No. <laughs> no. Stormfront. I finished Stormfront. Hey, what do you know? You gave that yeah. book to me. I read it right away. You only just now read it because you were in yes. a dark place when you first tried. I was in a very... Did I, I told the whole story of Stormfront, I, You right? have, yes. We've discussed yeah. it on many occasions. So, yeah. uh, friend's wedding just after getting broken up and <laughs> the one who broke up with me was at that wedding and uh, my car's battery died yeah, that's... and I got there I got to the hotel so it, they had like rented a hotel like just a lounge or a lodge area and I got there so late slash early that no one was there to let me into my room so after driving as many hours as I did I had to sleep in the lobby uh... and then I couldn't get any sleep in the <laughs> And then I got lost on the way home. Wow. And that was where I was halfway done with Stormfront, and I just returned it to the library. I'm yeah. like, I'm never reading this Yeah, again. that's a lot of bad connections. Did you then throw up on the bride, and then your pants fell down? <laughs> no. In front of everybody? That did not happen. Oh, okay. Anyway, I was like, you know what? Let's do this. Enough time has passed. <laughs> oh, wounds have healed, yeah. right? And, yeah, let's uh, open them have. back up. Let's do it. It, it. it was funny, because I just started it over. It was funny how much of it I did remember exactly and how much of it I had forgotten. Yeah. Uh, like, I remember the talking skull being oh, how like, let's you... make a love potion. Ha, cha, 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 cha. How could you forget? But yeah, I finished it. I liked it. It's, you know what's also funny? Like, when I read it, I picked up on it, too. Just how, like, formulaic it actually is. Mm -hmm. Just how every chapter is like, let's go meet the bartender. Yeah, but, chapter. but I think that's intentional. Yes. No, it's very intentional. Yeah. And it creates that kind of like throwaway thriller feeling yeah. while also having like a cool urban fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I liked it. I, 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 now that I finished it, I enjoyed it. And I could see myself reading more of these. Wow. Okay. Maybe these Dresden files will join the like Star Wars books for me and being those like, oh, what am I going to read? I need like a, a Dresden file. Yeah, a Dresden file or a, uh, a Jedi memoir. Uh huh. Yeah. I Jedi. That sounds good. <laughs> oh, that's an actual book, isn't it? It is. And Corin like, Horn, yeah. It was, yeah, it was retconned, like, even back then. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was. Um, that's a good one. I finished The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Oh, did it live up to Station Eleven? No, it did not. <laughs> uh, okay. Her writing style is still the same, and so I like her writing style. Okay. That's true. And, like... At the beginning of this book, it seemed like, all right, there's like a glass hotel. It's in the it's in the middle of the wilderness. It, it's kind of eerie. Mm -hmm. There's a character who's seeing the ghost of his past sometimes show up and be like, it was your fault. He he kind of re resents his sister for yeah. growing up with her parents. And there's all these wacky characters showing up in this hotel. I'm like, all right, I'm in it. Let's see how eerie this gets. And then suddenly it's the big short. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Okay. It, it really, like, the, as soon as you get to part two of four, maybe, as soon as that first part ends, it's just like, do you want to know what a Ponzi scheme is? Let us explain. This is how it affects these people who created the Ponzi scheme. And it just keeps going on. It's like, this mm. is how prison is like when you're an old man after doing a Ponzi scheme. Huh. This is, And I was just like, what's, what's the hotel then? Yeah. I, I don't know. She had a story she wanted to tell. <laughs> That I was not interested in. Okay. But it, it is not advertised as that. Uh, I also finished Uprooted by Naomi Novak. How was that? I liked the first half better than the second half. The first okay. half was actually more world building, and mm. I was interested in that. The second half became more plot heavy, and I just kind of lost interest. Uh, the writing style is a bit too dense for me. It's one of those things where it's a young adult book, or at least it's marketed to young adults. But it's also very long. Usually I just can't stay connected with that mixture. Like the same like 800 page length that you give an adult fantasy novel to. Yeah. But also for the young adult market. I'm just like – I. they were very brief. Like dialogue was very sparse. A lot of like overly descriptive stuff. It just – it was too much for me. Mm. What was in there that I liked was good. I just wish – I don't know. It, I wish it was edited down a bit. Yeah. It won the Nebula. Oh, so, okay. Uh, that was the reason I actually read it. Okay. So, and I've got my copy of uh, Ready Player Two. In oh, hand, okay. A nice. Physical copy of Ready Player Two by yeah. Ernest Klein. I'm not expecting anything good after I read Armada, mm. which I did not like. Yeah. And Ready Player One doesn't need a sequel. So yeah. here we go. Ready Player Two, everybody. <laughs> Let it ride. Uh, and for my next Overdrive pick, I picked Joseph Conrad's The Heart of Darkness because I've been meaning to read it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'll read that as my workbook. I, I wanted to read it because I liked Aguirre, Wrath of God, okay. uh, Warner Herzog film. All right. And then also the, the Apocalypse Now. Anytime like something adapts 
Heart of Darkness, like Ad Astra. I'm mm-hmm. always like, all right, let's get into this. So now <laughs> I, I got to read the original. Okay. Ad Astra? Yeah. How do you like Brad Pitt? I like Brad Pitt. I like the movie then. Well, I saw Benjamin Button, though, and that was... Okay, it's a different type of film than Benjamin Button. Is it Button. better than Benjamin Button? I've never seen Benjamin Button. Just, just tell me this. Which direction is Brad aging? The normal direction. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, he is. Okay. Well, I, don't maybe... know. I don't know if you like it or not. It's depressing. Oh, okay. It's cool. It's uh, surreal at times as well. Oh, nice. So I really liked it. All right. I feel like my reading has been interrupted a lot by book clubs and such recently, but I did finish one called Star Wars Stories of Light and Dark by Jason Fry and a slew of other authors. This is an anthology series set in the Clone Wars television show. And it takes individual episodes and writes them from a certain character's perspective. And so, like, Jason... Would you say a certain point of view? (laughs) I would. Jason Fries was the lead in in the book, and it was a Yoda story. And it was... I listened to the audiobook. And it was narrated by the voice Uh actor who does Yoda in the series. So each story was... I think it was more designed to be an audiobook, because each one was by the voice cast uh, doing it. So that was pretty cool. I read this for a book club I do with some friends, and, and one... One in the group is a huge Star Wars prequel fan. So every time it rolls around to his pick, we're reading a prequel book. So, But I don't mind The Clone Wars, so I didn't mind this one so much. Uh, I, I had quite a good time with it. <laughs> uh, I read Check, Please, okay. Book One by Ukazu Ngozi. This is a graphic novel. I wouldn't say teen, but I would say, you know, sort of like in that emerging adult uh, zone. It's, oh. about a, it's about a kid who's like a figure skater who goes to college and is part of like the like the college hockey team. So he's sort of like, he's the littlest one and it's, you know, hilarity ensues. Uh, he's also mm-hmm. a baker. So the cover has him like on skates, holding a pie. Sure. Yeah, it was fun. I, you know, I feel like if you, if you like the tone of Scott Pilgrim, you'll see things that you like in here. It's not, it's not a great comparison, but I think tonally you'll find some similarities there. Okay. Uh, book two is already out. And so I'm, I'm waiting for my hold on that to come in. I've started some Christmas reading, uh, with Melody Carlson's The Christmas Swap. And our book club, the Page Turner's Christmas Book Club for December, is a Robert B. Parker book, Silent Night, which Silent Night was a, a book that Robert Parker was writing at, at the time he died. And it sat unfinished for a while. And the co-author, or the new authors picked up the Spencer series. But then his literary agent, longtime literary agent, Helen Brand, went back and finished the book. She'd worked with him, you know, since the 70s and knew his style and everything. So she finished the book. So it's actually the last Spencer book written by Robert B. Parker, finished by Helen Brand. But the last time that Parker put pen to paper to write Spencer. So that's our that's our uh, Christmas Book Club pick. Copies at the library if you want to come and check that out and read along with us. I watched a few things. We had a temporary access to Peacock, the NBC streaming channel, like the premium version, some oh, some Google fancy, specials. Fancy. So we so we had that. The, and the trial is like ending this weekend, so we were finishing some things up. So I I mentioned in the past that we watched Brave New World, which I loved. I, we, both my wife and I really thought that was great. Had a good time with it. Mm-hmm. I watched Intelligence, a six episode sitcom, really, with David Schwimmer as an NSA agent who is transferred to like london and is set there and he's kind of a buffoon i don't think i would recommend it strongly but like i had a good time watching it you know i i laughed schwimmer was funny in it one thing that i really loved and hear me out on this because you're not going to be surprised but the level to which it was good is surprising and that is the new save by the bell <laughs> it is... now i did see a review that says uh peacock's save by the bell reboot knows exactly what it needs to do it does it's amazing it's amazing like you i've watched so many reboots you know it's reboot fever and like a lot of them it's either mm-hmm. either they just try to do the exact same thing or they go too far, or they just mm-hmm. don't find the balance. But it's like, Saved by the Bell focuses on the new characters. Like, you get plenty of Jesse and Slater, and you get a decent, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> you, you get a decent amount of Zach and Kelly, and basically a cameo from Lisa, like from the old wave. But the plot is really squarely focused on the new kids. And it's mm-hmm. not that it feels just like the old Saved by the Bell, but it's sort of like, if Saved by the Bell had, had evolved... And this was like the latest season. Like you can kind of mm-hmm. see where they share a Genesis, but it's just, it's so clever. It's just meta enough. Like all the actors are really funny in it. I feel like whether you're a Saved by the Bell fan or not, it's just a really good sitcom. I mean, I just think it's, 
We loved it. We watched it pretty quickly because mm-hmm. it just dropped a few days ago. Saved by the Bell is one of those shows that I watched a lot of as a kid, but I yeah. weirdly have like no connection to mm-hmm. it. Like I guess I just watched it. Yeah. It did nothing. <laughs> anyway, continue. I remember so clearly when the college years came out, and I was like, whoa, it's a new adult Saved by the Bell. This is awesome. Uh-huh. You know, But yeah. I think I was the only one in America who felt that way, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why we only got 13 episodes or whatever. But I do recommend, without reservations, the new Saved by the Bell, because it's okay. great. All right, before we get into New York Times bestseller list, we have some book awards to talk about. Now, of course, right now, the Goodreads Choice Awards are going on. The final round is up right now. Have you looked at this list, Eric? Uh, not since the uh, the voting round. Yeah. So like, the, the initial voting round. Yeah. The, Again, I haven't read it. I've read, like, nothing. I, oh, no. I, that's, that was the point that I was going to make. I mean, normally, yeah. I, I usually have a few things in most categories, or at least one. This year, it's, like, next to nothing. And that's, that I've is, like, the COVID toll. Harleen? And now the Glass Hotel. Yeah. Um, There's a few but, things. Yeah. There was a few things that I'd read that were in the initial round. Um, Check Please was in there, actually. And, mm-hmm. you know, just a handful of things. But it's definitely showing me just how little... I don't know. I did so much lowbrow reading just to, like, get through the bleak depression of, of living through a pandemic that I just have not kept up with things this year. So, yeah. But the final round of voting is open right now. So if you haven't voted in the Goodreads Choice Awards... Go and add your votes there, and then keep an eye out on goodreads.com for the list of winners. Always interesting to see what people are reading. We always find that useful when we're doing collection development, looking at the end of the year, what things we missed, you know, where we are. Yeah, I use the Goodreads Choice Award a lot Yeah, when when buying for young adult. Exactly. Because they split them up. They split them up into YA fantasy and sci-fi and then just YA, which helped. Yeah, well, and you got juniors in picture book, too. So it's really, it's a pretty broad topic and it's a pretty good indication of what people are actually reading which is nice so the downside though is like if there's a stephen king novel in the horror like it's likely going to win because it's the one that most people have read even if it sucks i think the institute one i'm pretty sure so anyway go check out the goodreads choice awards but i also want to mention two major literary awards that have uh, been announced in uh, the last couple of weeks the first is the booker prize the booker prize went to shuggy bane by douglas stewart Shuggy Bane is the unforgettable story of young Hugh Shuggy Bane, a sweet and lonely boy who spends his 1980s childhood in rundown public housing in Glasgow, Scotland. It's a heartbreaking story of addiction, sexuality, and love. Shuggy Bane is an epic portrayal of working class family that is rarely seen in fiction. It's a blistering debut by a brilliant novelist who has a powerful and important story to tell. Shuggy Bane. Yeah. Really, it's better than Hillbilly Elegy, the movie. <laughs> National Book Award for fiction. Our winner was Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. From the infinitely inventive author of How to Live Safely in a Science Fictional Universe comes a deeply personal novel about race, pop culture, immigration, assimilation, and escaping the roles we're forced to play. The winner for nonfiction was The Dead Are Rising, The Life of Malcolm X by Les Payne and Tamara Payne. And finally, the Young People's Literature for the National Book Award went to King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. 12-year-old Kingston James is sure his brother Khaled has turned into a dragonfly. When Khaled unexpectedly passed away, he shed what his Not first again. I know. He shed what was his first skin for another to live down by the bayou in their small Louisiana town. <gasps> With a marsh woman, do you think? Yeah. No, oh she's gosh. in North Carolina. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, Still, they're states away. Yeah, but bayous and marshes and all that. I just feel like yeah. they'd be friends. They'd get along. Sure. Swamp Thing is hanging out there with them. Khalid still visits in dreams, and King must keep these secrets to himself as he watches grief transform his family. So that was, again, the National Book Award winners for 2020. All right, let's, uh, let's roll into some book news. <laughs> Look into the future to see what it proves. It's time for book news. Then we will do the combined ebook print in fiction. It's weird going into a library, even for work. Yeah, I agree. I had to go to a different library for like a orientation kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And so like I've already been in my small library, and then I went to this other library. And so they're like, yeah, all right, you're done. You can just do stuff. I'm like, well, since I'm already here, and if I have it, I have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so right. That, yeah, that was just weird. So uh, yeah, I haven't been into a bookstore. No. 
When was the last time you were in an actual bookstore? Oh, God. Mm. Uh, even a I, Barnes. Yeah. I don't even remember. Was it even this year? Were you in one at all prior to the pandemic in 2020? Boy. Mm -hmm. That is a good question. In a legit yeah. bookstore. Yeah. I, I mean, I must have gone to Barnes and Noble some, at some point in the first in three, January. Or yeah, something. in the first three you months. Must have gone yeah. after like Christmas or yeah. something. You're you're I, flush with Nana's cash. I know. I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine, but I mean, it's been a long time. It's certainly yeah. the longest I've ever not been in a bookstore. That's for sure. Yeah, this is probably the longest I've never I haven't gone into a movie theater. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Since being. Uh, legitimate like moviegoer person yeah. like since being a teenager with a yeah. with money restaurants as well i haven't sat down in a restaurant since march Get not off. even once yeah so it's crazy yeah my screenplay is just sitting it has i have nowhere to write it ah what are you gonna do <laughs> oh no uh number 10 on the new york times bestsellers list for combined print and ebook fiction fortune and glory by janet ivanovich is at number 10. This is okay. the 27th book in the Stephanie Plum series, but you wouldn't yeah, know it. Right. What the heck? Stephanie I just don't understand. Plum. You had a good thing Again, going, Janet. Tantalizing 27. Is, is Janet the... Ivanovich the one who writes those sexy novels with her son? Yeah, but that's not this series. Oh, okay. That's like Fox and, and... Fox and O'Hare. Fox and O'Hare. Yeah. Oh, I sure. accidentally closed the list. Hold on. Oh. New combined New York Times bestsellers list. Oh, wait. I only got one more article I can read. Oh, no. <laughs> It's weird how we put all the real information behind a paywall and then we spread all this fake information because it's the free information. It's so weird. Oh, no, wait, I'm in. I hacked it. I didn't hack it. Wow. Just kidding. Wow. Look at that. An original theater piece from Eric Mickle. That's great. <laughs> Mom came home. She was always late coming home. We had to make our own dinner. SpaghettiOs. If only the heat worked. I used to like the SpaghettiOs with the meatballs. And now, I mean, I don't eat meat, but even so, yeah. I think I'd be safe because I doubt very much that there was yeah. meat in those. Oh, so. my gosh. I was watching the Conan O'Brien, uh, Conan Without Borders. He yeah. was in Italy. Yeah. And he got this, like, thing with fresh mozzarella, but it had Italian meat in it. And I thought giving up beef and pork, I would miss hamburgers yeah. and bacon. I do not miss, like, hamburgers and bacon. I miss the Italian meats. I miss uh, the yeah. I miss the, the pepperonis and the salamis yeah. and the capicolas. Capicola, sure. But – it's good. I also can now look at a cow and be like, go in peace. Yeah. yeah. And he'll say, also with moon. <laughs> <sighs> Growing up in Haverhill was hard. <laughs> uh, number nine, The Return by Nicholas Sparks. Yeah, a doctor. This is in North Carolina. The sure, doctor serving is, yeah. in the Navy in Afghanistan goes back to North Carolina with two women, where two women change his life. I bet they do. Yeah. 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 He probably learns a lot about himself yeah. and about what it means to love. Yeah, a little probably. Someone's dealing with grief, also. Yes, you sure. just gotta get grief, that out. But you're over, you're able to overcome the grief yeah. for new love. Yeah, so many yeah. sweaters, so many sweaters in this novel. <laughs> Number eight, The Sentinel by Lee Child and Andrew Child. Yeah, uh, brothers. Jack, Jack Reacher intervenes on an ambush in Tennessee and covers a conspiracy. Yeah, this cover is just so boring mm. because it's just do you like interstates do you like just seeing interstates from slightly higher up good news the sentinel i'm a little surprised that jack reacher still has the juice that it seems to have you know because there's talk about the new show and like now we're passing it on to a new author i don't know well it's a son thing right i mean no brothers, i feel like brothers. It's, it's oh andrew child is a brother he's his brother yeah from the same mother <laughs> i didn't ask but <laughs> New this week, speaking of uh, passing the baton, Tom Clancy, Shadow mm. of the Dragon by Mark Cameron, a missing scientist, uh, strange noises under the Arctic ice, and a mole who infiltrated American intelligence bedeviled President Jack Ryan. Oh, no. Man, I'm sure this will be bigger than anything he wrote while alive. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I got I to gotta wonder... Physically, I meant <laughs> term limits in the in the Jack Ryan universe. I mean, he's For sure. he's approaching FDR numbers at this point. I mean, you got to yeah, be careful. Yeah. You're going to get well, yourself a monarch in the Jack. Maybe Reed it's Ryan. one of those things where like he doesn't run for president, but then he run he he he's on somebody's ticket as like Secretary of Defense. Yeah, and then a terrible thing happens in the Clancy verse, and he's president again. Uh, oh, again. Okay. Yeah. Can that right. happen? No. If you're president, yeah, and you do your two, you do eight years, yeah. But then you run as somebody. You, you're mm -hmm. you're in somebody's cabinet. No, you, you can't be in somebody's cabinet. You can. So legally, you can you can finish a term for somebody and still have two full terms. So a maximum of right. ten years. 
So I guess if that were the case, then maybe. But it seems very unlikely. What if somebody just started in like day two, they're taken out. And so now you got the vice president. Can you still do 12 years then? No, it's 10. 10 is the limit. Wow. So like, so like LBJ, if he would have, if he would have, like he finished Kennedy's term, he had one term of his own. If he would have gone for another term, he could have hit the 10 limit, but he didn't. So run even again. if this vice, even if uh, President Jack Ryan is a vice president and he does his two limits, then they had just have an early election. I don't really think he'd be eligible to be vice president if he wasn't able to assume the presidency. Oh. So, I think that would take him out of the running. Okay. Well, then, yeah. What I'm a fun little <laughs> what a fun little <laughs> civics explanation this turned out Man, to be. Thanks for the, the opportunity. Of, no, not the end of V. Whatever the season was where they were like, it was a tie. Watch it. Yeah. I think that was season six. Yeah. Where it's just like, it's just a huge, yeah. full, and very fast. It's just coming at you hard and fast. Yeah. All that, like, this is what happens if yeah, we have there's a tie. So much. This is what happens if there's a tie again. Yeah. Yeah, Gary Cole was basically giving us a, uh, uh, oh boy, I can't remember the cartoon now. I'm just a bill. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock, Rock. he was yeah. giving us a Schoolhouse Rock presentation yeah. yep. on Vice. Yeah, you're right. Uh, did I say Vice? I yeah. meant Veep. Yeah, I'm still, speaking of, I'm still watching Designated Survivor, which also deals with what uh, happens when something weird oh, happens right. at a presidency, yeah. so. With the young Anywho, Jack Ryan. Yep, nope, different. Uh, he hasn't played Jack Ryan. No, he has not. Okay. Uh, number six is new this week. It's All That Glitters by Danielle Steele. Oh, she's back. Yep. She just came back Coco, for one more ride with us. Yep. Just as Coco is about to graduate from Columbia, okay. tragic events in her family sent her on a journey of self-discovery. Oh, no. Danielle she's... Steele in All That Glitters wow. is not gold. No. Uh, number five is six weeks on the list. It's The Time for Mercy by John Grisham. I'm still reading that. That one's That's one of the ones that got sidetracked uh -huh. by book clubs and things. Yeah. Book love. It's good. It is good. I'm liking it. That's good because I know you were unhappy with the I've, Grish. Yes, I. Books now. Yes, I, I've been. I've been hurt once or twice by Grish. Yeah. Sixteen year old is accused of killing a deputy in Clayton, mm -hmm. Mississippi, <laughs> 1990. Yep. Yep. Oh, <laughs> he did it. He did it. That's all. Oh, okay. He's accused, but he definitely. That's that's the. He did it. Number four, uh, the Law of Innocence by Michael Connelly and Harry the McGraw. In the Mickey Haller series. Oh. Haller defends himself when police nice. find a body of a former client yeah. in his car's trunk. Lincoln Lawyer. This is the Lincoln Lawyer series, not the Bosch series. Right. Though they all kind of intersect at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Homebody by Rupi Kerr. Poems and illustrations by the author of Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Poetry book. Yeah. It's nonfiction, uh, but okay. Number two, Daylight by Matt and Kim. <laughs> <laughs> that's a song okay uh daylight by oh i forgot the maroon word. five oh yeah daylight by maroon five yeah why can't i remember hold on no that's sunshine boy never mind uh daylight by david baldacci the fbi agent at lee pine's search for her twin sister overlaps with a military investigator's hunt for hmm. someone involved in global conspiracy wow i hope they're not one in the same you think the twin sister's Wanted for global conspiracy. I do, yeah, that's what I think. Yep. Number one is Give new this week. I'm excited. Rhythm of War by James Patterson. Oh, well. just kidding. Oh. Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Oh, well, look at that. The fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series. Okay. Technological discoveries Archive. and ensuing uh -huh. arms race change how war is fought. I have read book one of this series. That sounds like a I have snooze read... fest. What? No, so... Sanderson stuff is usually really what is good. It? It's called like a Stormlight Archive? Yeah. That doesn't sound fun. Uh, oh wait. Stormlight Archive. Yeah. Yeah, I read the you first one. You don't know what one. you're talking about. No, I did. It you was good. Know. The Way of Kings. You don't know uh, what you're but, you know, reading the first one means I've only read the first thousand pages of this series. Mm -hmm. Step <laughs> so, it up. Uh, no, th it wasn't a snooze fest. It was about, it It was this really weird world where, like, crustaceans have taken over. And uh, <laughs> they were trying to rediscover magic. It's been a lot while since I've read the first one. So okay. I've got the second one ready to go. I yeah. think I even have the third one on my Kindle. Okay. So... I should get to this. You should. Brandon Sanderson's The Rhythm of War is number one. Uh, this is like his big... He, he's been talking... Like, this is like a, a big epic fantasy. I think he would say it's like his uh, Wheel of Time. Just like, oh, you know, okay. massive, planned to be a long series. So wasn't, I better catch up. Wasn't The Wheel of Time his Wheel of Time? No, Wheel of Time was Jordan... 
It was Robert Jordan, but Sanderson yeah, it was, finished it. It was Robert Jordan, and then he finished it. Yeah. But that's not his. Yeah. Okay, so, but it's the literal Wheel of Time that he wrote. Yeah. It's all. It's all yeah. a comparison. It's always making. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. if I, I got nothing. I got no example. No. Oh, well, at least you knew that. The old Eric would have tried to come up with an example. This okay. new Eric is like. So it's like if I no, it wasn't do my a request. It was, no, it wasn't a request. It wasn't and a request. I have to come in and direct the yeah. Muppets. Oh, okay. I would still want to do my own puppets. You'd want to do your own puppets. Yeah. yeah. Like a, like a Walter. No, I wouldn't want Walter to be my main puppet. <laughs> okay. I'd want something All with right. character. All right. Usually, I think like a toucan and yeah. some kind of uh, yeah. like some kind of monkey puppet. I would, a monkey yeah. puppet. Okay. I don't want to be like a puppeteer, and I don't want to be like Jeff Dunham. Like I don't want to be sitting there with a puppet. <laughs> like, wait a second, you're the monkeys. Like That's... you're not the monkey. You're the monkey. The Jeff Dunham craze is something that I don't understand. It's... I never have understood yeah. it. I still don't. It's it's a strange one. No, I just want to like. You know how sometimes there's there's this show or something where it's just a person living his life and one of his roommates is a puppet it's and a nobody puppet. like comments on it? Yeah. Like Break the Bunny or yeah. something? Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. You that's, want something like that. That's the kind of fictional universe I want to live in. Well, I just want to live in a world where sometimes the bus driver is a puppet. He's like, eh, get on the bus! Put together a spec script and I'll take a look at it. Really? Yeah, I'm happy to read through it, give you some notes, give you some pointers. But won't it lose some of, without seeing the visuals of the puppets? Won't yeah. that, like, get on yeah. the bus be kind of more annoying yeah. and funny? You know what? We could call it Mike Quinn again. Oh, yeah. Let's just see if he, he has it. he I, has any thoughts. He, yeah, definitely. He, he helped uh, design them. He did, yeah. So, nip up. Yeah, he did. All right. Well, Eric, you know what time it is for? In this, in the, that was an awkward way to ask that. <laughs> uh, tool time? No, that's, that's not what? even, no. See if this clues you in. No. So now we're talking about Al's very large mother. No, I don't think so, Eric. Who, who's our who's who's the Another, girl on that's what he said. time? That's what he said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a it's a Lonely Hearts book club, Eric. Lonely Hearts. If you're if you're just tuning into the podcast now, what a weird choice you're making. But thank you. I mean, welcome. Uh, we started this show with a Lonely Hearts book club where. We run a report, we look at down in the stacks, find a book that's never ever circulated before, and then we go through it and we try to figure out why. We try to figure out if that was a wise choice or if that was a mistake. If it was a mistake, what do we do, Nick? We give it more power! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you to cue that up. All right. We started this with Thinning the Turkey Herd by Robert Campbell, and then we revisited this author once more in Hip Deep and Alligators. Those Deep were both yeah. those were both part of the Jimmy Flannery series, yes. where he's always like, "So I says, I says," and I just read Thinning the Turkey Herd after. <laughs> so I says, yeah. I said, yeah, you read it. You I read, read it, and it was uh, it was a painful experience. They yeah. didn't they didn't spare a minute on character development. Well, you but, don't need that. But that was in the middle of the Jimmy series. What I have for you today is a final Robert Campbell novel called The Plugged Nickel. Right on the cover, it says, Introducing Jake Hatch. So this is book one of the Jake Hatch series. And now on the cover here, we have a man who is kind of under a train. So I don't wait. Think... This, this is the Hip, Hip Deeps to Alligator series. No, this is Hip Deep is a Jimmy novel. This is a Jake Hatch this is book one of Jake Hatch. Okay, sorry. So I was, wondering, I was upset about the title change. Yeah, I know. So we've got a guy uh, on the front looking like he's about to be run over by a train. I don't think he has. I think we'd see a lot more grizzle if he had. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't hate the cover. It it looks a little bit like uh, you know like a boxcar children situation, just like the style of art and everything. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. I is what I is. Benny said. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Use guys uh, <laughs> from Edgar Award hey, winning up. Box car, so what? You know what? It's mostly box, so that's good. Their grandpa was actually very rich. Um, from Edgar Award winning author Robert Campbell. There's trouble on the rails when two halves don't make a whole. Oh, halves of a body? Gal. Plugged nickel. Introducing Jake Hatch. Uh, let's see. I was going to give you a cover price, but it is not listed. Eric. I'm looking at this book, and I don't see any bending in the binding. I don't see any old stamps. I don't no, see... I mean, was buying these books at the time was a bigger... This is, uh, 
Flannery fan. Apparently, I mean, this is pristine. Readers, this is pristine. Let me tell you the original uh, publication date here: nineteen eighty-eight. 1988, published by Pocket I was Books. Two years old. Cover art by uh, Ron Barbagallo. Okay. Let me give you from the inside flap here. Plug Nickel, Robert Campbell. From the celebrated author of The Junkyard Dog, In La La Land We Trust, and The 600 Pound Gorilla, comes a stunning new series featuring Jake Hatch, the railroad detective. Come on. <laughs> He's a railroad. Is there a lot of railroad crime? Is there a uh, lot? Yeah, I get it. It was like the uh, it's like those people trying to solve the crime during uh, yeah. a hurricane. Yeah, you know, he, he, there's crimes happening on the railroad. Let me ask you. Solve them. Let me ask you. If you have a crime that is committed at at a crossways, you know what I mean. So like, it's on the road, but it's also on the tracks. Who uh -huh. has jurisdiction? Is it a matter of who gets there first? How do you work that out with a railroad detective? I think it's the caboose. The caboose. Yeah. Decides the caboose it? as jurisdiction, We're, yeah. Not the detective, but the caboose. Take it up with the caboose. <laughs> okay. Anyway, where was I? Jake Hatch, the railroad detective with a widow lady at every whistle stop. A widow lady? <laughs> a widow lady. Is that what was called widows in 1988? And a murder widow on ladies? every train. Hold on. That was nonsense. Let me read this again. Uh, a stunning new series featuring Jake Hatch, the railroad detective with a widow lady at every whistle stop and a murder on every train. A murder on every train? Every train has Jeez. a murder. Every train has a story. I guess. Every train has a lover. Every wow. train has a teacher. Okay. I mean, right away, this is... So they're saying that this guy is a detective just for the railroad, that every train they run, someone is murdered on, and he's got a widow lady in every town. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, every lady. I would. This is not a safe way to travel. <laughs> this is not a safe way to travel because you know one of you is gonna get murdered. Yeah, one of yous. <laughs> one of yous. Yous guys uh, with the trains. All right, body count. Uh, here's our synopsis. The night was pitch black, filled with driving train, driving rain. Sorry, I was in a train zone, filled with driving rain. When the California Zephyr jolted to a stop on a desolate stretch outside McCook, Nebraska. Somebody pulled the emergency brake, catapulting Jake Hatch out of the train onto a severed corpse. So is that technically a railroad murder? That's my question. I think it's one of those situations where, uh, yes. Okay, you're going to go with yes. All right. Uh, he stumbled over the trousered <laughs> bottom half. So maybe the guy in the cover did. I guess he did. I guess that is only. Someone else found the torso neatly divided at the belt. Oh, yikes. Because of the... If the corpse, you you have to solve the crime. Right. The jurisdiction is where the corpse is found. Is where it the where, body is found? Is it? But what if, what if, the legs are found on private property? Is it where the head is? Is that the thing? Wherever well, then, the head if is. If it's private property, like if the legs aren't private property, then the person who has the legs has the responsibility to report it. But now it's just evidence. He's got to turn it, it over. I okay. don't know. I've only watched four seasons of The Wire. Let's say wherever the head is. Let's say the head decides yes. jurisdiction. I think that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and if there's no head, it's anybody's game. <laughs> it was Hatch's job to piece together the truth. Ooh, that's a that's not a very tasteful pun at this no, point. No, it's a, it's a morbid pun. All he had to go on was a book of sonnets and a money clip in one pocket and three cigarette butts and a lipstick... And a you know, this list keeps going on. It sounds like he has a lot to go I know. on. Book of sonnets, money clip in one pocket, three cigarette butts, and a lipstick handkerchief in the other. And a plugged nickel, now hidden in his own pocket, leading him to a criminal mastermind, a case of espionage, and an almost, almost perfect murder. Let me ask you a question. What is a plugged mm -hmm. nickel? Oh, I'll look it up. Oh, boy, this is going to be bad. I'm going to have to delete my search history after this. <laughs> I think that's wise. Yeah, I think that is wise. Okay. All right. Let's get in. Let's get in. A plug... Oh, a, okay. A plug nickel or plug nickel... Yes. ...is a nickel where the plug, the center disc, has been removed, thus decreasing the metal value of the coin. So a nickel with a hole in it? Okay. Chapter one. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. I just don't understand. But all right, chapter one. It was 4.20 in the a.m. Do you like that, in the a.m.? Yeah, it's 4.20 in the a.m. It's a choice. Do you see 4, 20, do you see 4 a.m. as uh, late at night or early morning? Anything. Okay, if, if I think 4 and after, 
I feels like morning to me. If I'm too mm-hmm. awake, like if my son wakes me up after four, I might as well just stay up. You know what I mean? That was the correct answer. I feel like as soon as four o'clock hits, you're in the morning. Yes. Before that, where it still says 3 a.m., you're three at night. It's night. Yeah, I agree with you. But this also, this kind of sounds like what you'd say at, on like a radio station. You know, it's 4.20 in the a.m. The morning drive train is on the tracks. Ooh, ooh, you know what I mean? We're going to help you on your way. We're going to help you stay awake. All right, everybody, this is Starship. <laughs> the rain was beating down like it wanted to flood the world. Oh. Hey, everybody. Jason again. You are listening to uh, <laughs> Plug Nickel Radio. <laughs> we just found out we don't have the rights. We had to stop that instantly, and I might have bankrupt the station. <laughs> All right. If anybody has a couch, anybody into couch surfing, uh, please call the station. I'll take any of the callers. Remember, ask for Jason. That's me. Fortunately, uh, I uh, I married a widow woman and uh, <laughs> it did not pan out. Had one in every stop and I chose the wrong one, apparently. But that, them are the reps. Anyway. City. Oh, coming, that was a misclick. Coming up, the best of public domain music. <laughs> oh, say, can you see? All right. This is getting off the rails. Tracks? No, rails is better, yeah. It was 4.20 in the a.m. The rain was beating down like it wanted to flood the world. That's hard-boiled. That's hard-boiled. Yeah, that is hard-boiled, yeah. The California Zephyr out of Chicago on the way to San Francisco slash Oakland was crawling around a sharp curb along the tracks of the Burlingham Northern through an almost uninhabited, lonely stretch of road about 25 minutes outside McCook, Nebraska, 35 Mm. minutes away from Akron, Colorado, on the way to Denver. The whole train was asleep. The high rollers in the roomettes and compartments all tucked in. The working folks making do with their reclining chairs and coach. The railroad personnel asleep in the dormitory car. The few on Doty dozing off sitting up, but ready to respond if called. I was awake. Because I'm a railroad cop. I'd added that part. Mm -hmm. I was awake, looking at my face in the mirror created by the night outside in the rain-soaked window. The runnels on the glass scarred the image, making me look twice my age, which was about how old I felt. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> uh, just so we know, Under Siege 2, okay. Dark Territory, came out in 1995. Okay. So, the movie came after. You think this is a remake of Under Siege 2? No, the book came first. What the book? The one you're reading. This book? Yeah. Is you it said 1988. Is it similar to Under Siege? Well, it's on a train. I've never seen the Under Siege films. I've seen parts of Under Siege 2. Okay. It's on a train. Steven Seagal. Anyway, he's feeling old. My eyes were burning, my feet hurt, and my collar felt tight even though the top button was undone. For God's sakes, I probably had high blood pressure, the beginnings of varicose veins, and for sure I needed glasses. I'm a railroad, plainclothes cop working for Burlington Northern out of the Omaha office. I was aboard because it was me who caught the call from the station agent out of Atuma, Iowa the night before, warning us about some surly types that, in his opinion, might be riding on stolen tickets. That is low stakes. That is low stakes right there. So at 10.45 p.m., I'd swung aboard and found out within 15 minutes that the surly types were Baptist ministers on their way to some convention in Salt Lake City. Hey, this is this is not related, but my sister lives in Salt Lake City. Okay. Uh, sorry, I clicked on uh, Stephen Seagal's name. Okay. Because I know a bunch of crap has gone down with him. And... Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Looks like his uh, looks like his reputation is under siege. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling about this? Can I ask? Uh, fine. Do you have? I need to see who's streaming Under Siege Two. <laughs> this is better than this is better than the Jimmy novel so far. Oh, right away from the beginning, sure. Yeah. It's definitely more hard boiled. It is. It definitely. What was is. the first? What was the first line in the tur- Like the turkey one was just so oh ugh, so bad. I don't remember. Yeah, but the beginning we knew it was bad from You'd, the start. Yeah, as soon as it started, go back to episode yeah. one. Yeah. Of the All the Book Show to hear about yeah. thinning the turkey herd. Mm-hmm. I could have gotten off at Lincoln, Nebraska around midnight, kipped down to the station, and caught the eastbound Zephyr back to Omaha around 5.30 a.m., but I decided I might as well go on to Fort Morgan, Colorado. I'd arrive there just about the same time. I have a friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jane yeah. Butterfield lives just oh. off the main highway about 15 miles outside of Fort Morgan. If a I could desperate catch... desperate but rich. I guess. A, a desperate but rich widow woman. I Probably. If I could catch or beg a ride that early in the morning, I could be sitting down to one of Janel's country breakfasts around 6.30. Janel. Janelle? 
Janelle. J A N E L. Janelle. You probably want to say Janelle. Janelle. Well, in well, 1988. At first, I thought it was just Jane, but there's there is that L that is bewitching. I should have gotten off and gone home to Omaha. Then I wouldn't sure have become it's not involved. Him, like abbreviating poorly, like Jane will have breakfast no, ready not. for me. It's not okay. Then I would have become involved and had the bottom of my left ear shot off. Whoa. Jeez, this so guy we, lives a rough and tumble I life. I know, boy, you wouldn't expect that from a railroad cop. But I guess, you know, well, he's like, like an N air marshal. NCIS is all about, you know, murders yeah. in the Navy. And that's yeah. been going for 35 years. So why he's not? It's like Jake Liam Neeson and nonstop, except if it was on a train, and which I guess is uh, the commuter. Right. And, make, with Liam Neeson. and making multiple stops. Liam Neeson's never done a train movie. I bet he has. He has. The commuter. The commuter. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I was looking at my reflection, convincing myself I wasn't such a bad-looking fella after all, when the brakes grabbed the tracks, squealing like 200 scalded cats. Now, here's the beauty of the line we just read. What it tells us is that he is... He's he's a hard handsome. He's a handsome that has seen seen life and maybe he has a few scars, but he also has an opinion of himself that says like I know I'm not the best looking guy out there. It really gives us a look into the character, but also maybe how the world views this character. Yeah. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm going to jump ahead to some dialogue. Okay. What happened? I hey, shouted. Hey, forget about it. <laughs> hoping for better results the second time I asked. You know, breaks. this is very differently written than thinning the yeah. turkey herd. So, I got to give Robert Campbell that. You think maybe somebody he pulled was... the emergency brake? Is that you all? Think you... Maybe he was reading this, and then like a paint can fell on his head. He's like, I gotta huh. write Jimmy Flannery. Maybe, maybe. Is that all you know? If I knew any more, Jake, you think I'd be going out in this GD stuff? He shouted back. Watch yourself. The road falls off steep along there. I'm not hating this. Nick's gonna finish this one. I, you know, I mean, it's short. Thinning the turkey herd was under two hundred pages. What are we looking at here? Yeah, this is a cool two two seventeen. Looks like two nineteen. A cool yeah. two nineteen. Yeah. That's a, smooth, that's a smooth, quick read. I could knock this out in an evening and tell you all about Jake Hatch. Yep. Maybe I'd read more. And in a different world, you could go to a coffee shop, order yourself a drink, maybe get the lunch when you get hungry, and then you'd be done with the book. It has thirty ratings on Goodreads, five uh -huh. reviews. Pretty strong. Railroad detective. Modern setting with retro flavor. What? How is that a modern setting, Helen on Goodreads? All right. What? Whatever. A modern setting is a train. It's a train setting. Yeah, where, where people are traveling by rail? That's not, that's not that modern. That still happened in In the late 80s? I don't even think so yes, in the late 80s. You I don't think trains so. still had some romance in the 80s. If anything, they were probably updated with a flock of seagulls playing in the <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> Now, I don't know how many books this has. Goodreads is only showing two. It's showing Plugged Nickel and Red Scent. So I guess the gimmick here is coin-themed. You can only go so far with that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Railroad Detective. Yeah. yeah. What do you know? It's got decent reviews. I only see the two of them. If I had to choose between reading another Jimmy Flannery novel, mm -hmm. like Hip, Deep, and Alligators or The 600-Pound Gorilla, I would pass. If yeah. somebody put this in my hand, it was like, you have to read the mm -hmm. Jake Hatch novel Plugged Nickel by Robert Campbell. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah, all right. Have so you read his new book, Hard Canadian Quarter? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I could commit to doing it, and there's no way to hold me accountable. So <laughs> let's both. Let's both commit. <laughs> We're going to read Plugged Nickel. No, my word My word means something. I can't, I can't right. make these false. That's statements. respectable. <laughs> that is respectable. Yeah. All right. Well, uh... Now, I did, I did destroy the sanctity of the Jimmy novels by checking out Thinning the Turkey Herd. And actually, right. since we did Thinning the Turkey Herd, a few of the Jimmy novels had checked out after, after that episode. So I like to think that we've raised the level of awareness of the works of Robert Campbell, at least at the David A. Howe Public Library. A little bit, yes. I like to think that we played a, played a role in that. Do you have a favorite mm -hmm. Lonely Hearts book club that we've covered over the years, Eric? Gosh, I mean, what was the He Was a Man? That was so early. I don't even remember what that one was That was called. like the second one. That was a really trippy one, I remember. The cover was, it was something about like Italy. It was It was Italy something, I yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, that one stands with me. I mean, uh, uh, Frost Nixon, also a pretty funny oh, one. Oh, yeah, that was the Frost Nixon one. Wait, Frost Nixon? No, not Frost I mean, Nixon. Nixon Carver. Nixon Carver. Nixon Carver, yeah, where Ray yeah, Carver's that... talking about his uh, hemorrhoids and Nixon is talking yeah. about his phlebitis. Yeah. That's that's pretty it's too solid. bad because Nixon Carver is not a bad character name. No, it's not. Nixon that's, Carver. I can see that. Bar. Yeah, David Baldacci is yeah. Nixon Carver. He was looking yeah. to punish someone. He yeah, just needed to target. That would be pretty good. Yeah, be pretty good. It. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the, those the early ones, I think after a while you realize, like, oh, these are just going to get ridiculous. Yeah, they're bad. So my, I think uh, my favorite memory of the Lonely Hearts Book Club is when we were doing, I think it was Hollywood Life, and you were like, I have seen this cover before. And we looked back, oh, and sure word. enough, yep. sure enough, that cover, not only had they reused the cover, with it was a different author, it was a different publisher, but it was on another Lonely Hearts Book Club that we covered. I mean, that's, yes. you can't... You can't make that kind of thing up. That's just uh, that's that, just pure that was magic. That's ridiculous. The same like sultry picture of like a woman in red yeah, satin red, sheets. Yeah, red satin sheets. You got it. Yep. Yeah. And it's funny because the one that reused it reused it as just like shrinking it down and put it in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, it was so, just it was it just was, a yeah. little tiny image in there. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty hard to top, I would say. Yeah. I would say that. Yeah, Jason on the uh, on Plug Nickel Radio could really use some of that public domain material. He definitely could. He definitely so. could. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you never know what you're going to find in clip art. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> if, if it works for one book, it's going to work for the next, I guess, was the philosophy mm -hmm. there behind Hollywood Life. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that that's going to be a wrap then on the, uh, the Lonely Hearts Book Club. Eric, my friend, this has been a good journey. This has been a highlight for me. I'm going to miss you. And uh, that's going to do it. For the All the Book Show. Bye, everybody. Read. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>